The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Paulina Lovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, Camtel, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this session of learning with Mbinka Puntil Leslie. You are from five biology teacher on distance education. Before we start our today's lesson, let us first of all correct the assignment that was given in our last lesson. We were given a genetic question which reads, when a red flowered plant was crossed with a white flowered plant of the same species, all the resulting offspring of the F1 generation were red flowered plants. When one of the F1 offspring was self-pollinated, 176 red flowered plants and 64 white flowered plants of the F2 generation were obtained. Explain the genetics of these crosses by using appropriate uh, diagrams and symbols. In fact, let us solve this question. Correction of assignment. If I crossed a red flowered plant with a white flowered plant and I obtain a red flowered plant as F1 plant, then red is dominant over white. And then we're dealing with complete dominance. So we are going to let the letters of the alphabet to represent our alleles. And here we are going to choose letter R. Capital R will represent the allele for red flowered plants since it is dominant, and small r will represent the allele for white flowered plant since it is recessive. So So the allele that is dominant, capital R, is with, uh, the, for the red flower is capital R, and that which is recessive is the small r. We are already represented. So starting our genetics, we start with the parental phenotypes, followed by the parental genotypes. And from the crossing, we automatically know that the plants that we crossed were all homozygous, or we are from a pure brain. So, what is the parental phenotype, parental genotypes? So, we're going to deduce the parental uh, genotypes. So for the phenotype, we are crossing a red flowered plant with a white flowered plant.
Then for the parental genotype. Parental genotype, you know the genes occur in pairs. So we're going to write capital R, capital R, and small r, small r. Then meiosis has to occur for us to obtain the gametes. Remember, the gametes are haploid. As they are being separated, there will be random fertilization to give rise to the F1 generation. Random fertilization could be done either by using lines or by using a punit square. So after crossing these, you see that our offspring, they are all capital R, small r. And since R is dominant over, uh, since capital R, which represents the red, uh, red flowered plant, is dominant over the white, all offspring that will be obtained will be all red flowered plants. So you see, this is by using symbols and diagrams, we have just demonstrated the genetics of the first part of the cross. In the second part, we are told that this farmer self-crossed the F1 plants, that he crossed the F1 plants among themselves. And after crossing the F1 plants among themselves, he obtained plants that gave a ratio three is to one. So how? Can this be demonstrated genetically? We wipe the board and we do the second cross. As continuation, so you have to just write crossing the F1 plants among themselves, or you say, for you to obtain the second filial generation, the plants were self-pollinated. So you write. So the parental phenotype, now be red flowered plant cross red flowered plant since all our f1 plants were all red flowered plants and then now the genotype we just get back to the genotype that we obtain in the F1 generation, and we use it here, which was capital R, small r. So after getting the genotypes, then we get the gametes. But before gametes, meiosis has to occur, segregation.
And for us to obtain the offspring, random fertilization have to occur because you will not be there to direct which garment will have to fuse with the, which. So random fertilization is the next step. So after the random fertilization, we have obtained the F2 generation or the F2 genotype, F2Y, because we have crossed F1 and F1, then we obtain an F2. And how many we have? Homozygous, RR, then we have two heterozygous uh, organisms that's capital R and small r, and then we have homozygous, small r, small r. And you know that if capital R is present, it is designating a red flowered plant. So how many red flowered plants are obtained? Three red flowered plants and one white flowered plant from this cross. So we have three red flowered plant and uh, one white flowered plant. But remember, in the question, we are told that after this cross, he obtained 176 red flowered plants and 64 white flowered plants. Let us find out whether what we have solved, in fact, equates the ratio obtained. Let us see. 176 and 64. For us to calculate the ratio, we have to divide by the smallest number, which is 64. One seventy-six divided by 64 is 3.1 with values. And since it is less than five, we are going to consider round it down to three. And 64 on 64 is equal to one. Therefore, our phenotypic ratio is 3 is to 1, which ties with the uh, phenotype that we earlier obtained. So our phenotypic ratio is 3 is to 1. So I hope your assignment is well treated or done. Let us now begin our today's lesson, which is variation within the human race. Variation within the human race. The fifth lesson on the transmission of genetic information. This lesson will follow this plan. We shall start with the learning objectives. Then we have prerequisites, real life situation, lesson activities, summary, application exercises, and then an assignment, we have resources. At the end of this lesson, you, the learners, should be able to explain how variation is brought about in humans, state the causes of variation, and differentiate with examples the different types of variation. As prerequisite, you already have great knowledge on reproduction, DNA and chromosomes, cell division, and genetics. How is our today's lesson related to daily life? We have a real life situation on the screen. We're going to read together. And then we are going to deduce the scientific problem in the real life situation. And then hypothesis will be stated that we shall verify at the end of our today's lesson. Let's read the real life situation together. A certain couple who have three children became worried when they discovered their third son, George, had the ability of rolling the side edges of his tongue into a three-leaf clover. Their other two children could not do this. What is the 
problem in this real life situation. The child's ability of rolling the side edges of his tongue into a three-leaf clover. What are the possible causes? Witchcraft. The child was practicing witchcraft. Secondly, the next is tongue rolling, which is genetically inherited. So, at the end of our today's lesson, we shall know which of these hypotheses is the accepted hypothesis. Lesson activity one. You're going to critically examine the picture and answer the questions that follow. You have a picture A and picture B, and in fact, picture A, observe keenly. You see this is a human eye. Look at the various colors of, look at the colors of the retina. The choroid giving this heart is a color. You can take note. Okay, look at these humans. These are the human hands. Look at the various. Are they the same? Look at this one. Even this one that is lighter is not the same like this. Various cups. So answer the questions that follow. What can you identify on the pictures labeled A and B? A is human eyes and B, human hands. Are all the elements identified on the pictures the same? No. As the eyes and hands have different colors. The underline, they have different colors. Even though pictures A and B vary, do these belong to organisms of the same species? Yes, these organisms, these are humans. The eyes, they are all of humans. The skin tones are all of humans. They belong to the same species, but there is something that is happening. Different colors, different eye colors, and different skin colors. What is therefore our today's lesson? Our today's lesson is basically on variation, and this variation is the tendency of an offspring to be different from parents and different from each other. Tendency of an offspring to be different from parents and different from each other. Or in other words, you can say the ability of organisms to be different, organ organisms of the same species to be different from each other. They are very characteristics different from each other, even though they can still interbreed and produce fertile offspring. These differences occur during meiosis and is a result of difference in gene mutation. During sexual reproduction, parents pass certain characteristics to their children. So you need to know that as sexual reproduction takes place and there is fusion of gametes, both parents pass certain characteristics to their children. And examples of variation within a human population, we have height, we have skin color, we have hair and eye color, face and nose shape, we have dimples, we have freckles, we have blood crop, tongue rolling, and many more other examples, in fact, of genetic variations that can occur in a human population. On your screen, you have a child with a dimple. There are some children that cannot do this. And in fact, the second picture, you see tongue rolling. That's a second example of variation. Tongue rolling can be seen into various forms. There are some people that cannot do this. So the next example is height of individuals of the same age group. They are the same age group, but look at them. Some are too tall. Even looking at their skin colors, they are different, different. Some are short, some are tall, some are pale. So there is already a difference in height. Looking at skin color, you see we have various types of skin colors in humans, from the deep dark to the very, very light down here. So even though some are light in complexion, the lightness, in fact, varies, and those that are dark in complexion as well, the darkness varies. It is clearly demonstrated on these hands and this leads us to the various skin tones that we have. So you make sure, in fact, you understand these. So the next, as I've already indicated, eye color. We have seen this in our activity. Look at the various eyes. That's another example. See the eye, look at the iris. The iris of the various eyes are having different colors. And then from here, you're going to see the various types of eyes that humans do have. In fact, we have organisms of the same species, but our eyes are not the same. So there is variation in our eyes. Then the characteristics that, in fact, can be transferred 
From parents to offspring, we call them inherited characteristics as we have seen most of them, eye color, height, tongue rolling, etc. However, features such as skills, such as pride, preference to certain kind of foods, ability to drive a car, ride a bicycle, certain likes and dislikes, changes in body weight, that is, in fact, doing exercise or might be taking some body supplements, athletic ability, ascent, and many more can not be passed to offspring and as such are called non-inherited or acquired characteristics. Let us now look at the types of variation. How many types of variation exist? We have two main types of variation. We have continuous variation and discontinuous variation. Continuous variation, we start with continuous variation, and it is a type of variation that both inherited and environmental factors determine the characteristics of an individual. Take note, both inherited and environmental factors determine the characteristics of an individual, e.g. body mass, e.g. height. You could receive a gene from your parents that in fact you're supposed to be tall, but insufficient nutrition we will not, in fact, you will not be tall because you did not have the necessary requirements that could uh, uh, make you tall. So environment is taking also part here. There is no definite height that a person must attain. That is continuous variation. Then people vary in height between lowest and highest extremes. When you see human beings that are existing on earth, you see those that are very, very short and those that are very, very tall. That is continuous variation. And looking at the second type of variation, which is discontinuous variation, it is a type of inheritance where inheritance alone determines the characteristics of an individual. It is not inheritance and environment as in continuous. Here it is only inherited traits or inheritance or genes determine the characteristics of an individual. E.g., blood groups in humans controlled by a single gene. I, in the blood groups, we have four blood groups, as you had seen in your in form four. Blood group A, blood group B, blood group AB, and blood group O. You Either you are A, you are B, you are O, or you are AB. You see, there is no uh, limits, as in the case of this, of uh, continuous variation. Second example is tongue rolling. Mankind is grouped into two categories. They either can or cannot roll their Tongue. This is also an example of discontinuous variation, meaning the characteristic here is discrete. There are two major causes of variation. Looking at the causes of variation, we have two major causes. We have genetic arrangement and we have environmental factors. And genetic arrangement, the characteristics of organisms are determined by the composition of genes the organism uh, possesses. So the type of characteristics that you portray, the phenotype or the, if you, if, yes, the phenotype that you portray is with respect to the type of gene composition that you have. And to this light, individuals are different because their genotypes are different. In a pair of genes, one is dominant, then the characteristics of the dominant gene will be outwardly expressed. So if a, in a pair of genes, one is dominant, characteristics of the dominant will be outwardly expressed while that of the recessive genes will not be determined by the organisms. Some features that can be controlled by genes, some features that can be controlled by genes and not the environment. We have tongue rolling, we have blood growth. Then those that can be controlled by both uh, the environment gene, we have height, we have uh, our skin and we have body mass. Let us now look at environmental factors. Some environmental factors that affect uh, variation that causes or that cause variation. The differences between the environments of an individual also cause variation. If, for example, you in Africa, if you were born in Europe, or might be a person in Europe born in Africa, they might not be looking exactly the same as we look. Why? Because of this, the changes in environment. Or might be the zone where you're living in. It might be hotter. And, the other, and other zones which are colder, if you were born in the colder region, if you find yourself in a hotter region, you see the, dif this, the differences are clear because environment is influencing your phenotype. 
So most of these environmental factors as well, uh, as I already indicated, the first is nutrition, the type of food. If you're having enough food, good. Maybe some of your traits will be expressed because they have the necessary requirements. If they're not, you, they might not be expressed because you, might, you, are, uh, you have the next which is temperature, either too hot or too cold. Then we have light. There are environments that have high light intensities. Some have low light intensities. So we have some physical forces as well. The outward feature of organism could be determined by a gene or influenced by environmental conditions. So height of an organism is determined by a gene. But if your height is determined by the gene, but you do not have any adequate, you have, you have your inadequate diet will prevent you obviously from attaining your height. And as we're talking about gene arrangement, mutation as well affects the gene, and this mutation will lead to the alteration of the nucleic acid sequence of the genome of an organism. And this mutation is the ultimate source of all genetic variations, providing the raw material on which evolutionary forces such as natural selection can act. Resolving our real life situation, where a certain couple who have three children became worried when they, when they discovered their child, their third son, George, had the ability of rolling the side edges of his tongue into a three-leaf club and the other two elder children could not do this. So they were like worried, maybe George has a problem with the tongue. Now, the scientific problem that was coined out is that a child, a child has uh, the ability of rolling the side edges of his tongue into a three -cl uh, leaf clover. So two hypotheses were stated. Is it witchcraft that made the child to do so? Or tongue rolling that is genetically inherited that made the child to do so? From these two hypotheses, it is the second hypothesis, Tom Rowling, which is genetically inherited, as we have seen in the course of our lesson, that Tom Rowling is a type of discontinuous variation, as what determines this is just the genes, the genome, and not the environment. We also saw the other example as blood groups and color of your eye. These are some of the examples of discontinuous variation. From our today's lesson, we can recall that variation is a tendency of offspring of a population to be different from parents and different from each other. We have as well seen that these differences occur during meiosis and is as a result of the differences in gene composition. And we have seen that examples of variation within a human population include height, skin color, hair and eye color, face and nose shape, dimples, freckles, we have blood groups, we have tongue, rolling, and many more of other examples. And we have seen two main kinds of variation. We have continuous variation and discontinuous variation. We have seen that in continuous variation, both inherited and environmental factors determine the characteristics of an individual. Like for example, your body mass and height, and that in discontinuous variation, on the inheritance alone, that is the genes, determine the characteristics of an individual. And such examples include blood in humans, tongue rolling, eye color in humans. Let us now verify whether the objectives of this lesson are being achieved or have been achieved or attained. The first is in the form of a, a multiple choice question and it reads, mass, height, skin color, intelligence and leaf area are examples of A, continuous variation, B, discontinuous variation, C, discrete variation, D, both continuous and discontinuous variation. If you have followed our lesson keenly, the correct answer is A, continuous variation as mass, your body, you can increase in size, decrease in size, depending on the type of food you're taking, even your height, your skin color, depending on the environment you are exposed to. Intelligence, we keep on learning every blessed day. We keep on accumulating knowledge. Leaf size, can the surface area of the leaf size can increase or reduce, either whether it is turgid or it is plasmalized. So you see, this is an example of, these are examples of continuous variation as both the genes and the environment 
determine this type of variation. Then secondly, our own personal physical characteristics are the result of our own. Personal physical characteristics are the result of A, genetic inheritance. B, environmental factors shaping our bodies as we grow to adulthood. C, genetic inheritance primarily, but with some shaping by the environmental uh, forces. D, random chance or luck. What is the correct response? In fact, it is C, our personal, our own personal physical characteristics are determined by genetic inheritance firstly, and then some shaping is done by environmental forces. And then the third, blood growth, natural eye color, and inherited diseases are examples of A, continuous variation, B, discontinuous variation, C, discrete variation, D, both continuous and discontinuous variation. In fact, the correct answer is B, as blood growth, natural eye color, inherited diseases, as we are seeing in the course of our lesson, are in fact discontinuous, a type of uh, examples of discontinuous variation as these uh, uh, traits or characteristics are determined only by your genotype or inheritance. Which of the following statements are true? A. Sometimes variation occurs as a result of random genetic mutations. B. The environment actually influences traits that survive and are passed on. C. Variation exists within the same species. D. All of the Ten means above are correct. In fact, all these ten means are correct. The reason why the correct answer is D. As your assignment, state the differences existing between continuous and discontinuous variation. State the differences between continuous and discontinuous variation. For more knowledge, you can consult the following resources, even though not exhaustive. We have come to the end of our lesson. In our next lesson, we shall study test cross and back cross. See you in the next lesson. Yes, a kina bia dinki do mane tambia ninya ne injo bia yen tam tama mote tam zabike tam tama tonge tam zabike tam tam tama mote tam zabike mane tambia ninya ne injo bia yen